Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm joined by Ben Mowbray from Second Dynasty. How are you doing, Ben? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Now, you have a very exciting Kickstarter. We've been loving the pictures that have come through for us. But before we delve into that, I just wanted to find out a bit about you first. What's your background in tabletop gaming? How did you get started? Well, I... Uh... Basically, I, I got into it through RPGs, um, to be honest. Uh, that, that's sort of the avenue I came in on. I, I started with uh, Robotech and Rifts when I was 14, uh, upgraded to Dungeons & Dragons in the, the uh, 21st century, and uh, I, I played a ton of different games, uh, lots of Traveller which is uh, and, and Star Wars, which is where the sci-fi comes through. But yeah, I enjoy uh, role-playing using uh, miniatures for the tactical element of it and uh, I guess that's how I sort of got into gaming. I do, do a lot of uh, online role playing too today but uh, these days uh, but yeah I still have a great passion for for the the tabletop versions. Yeah I, I can I can see behind you you've got quite a collection of cool geek stuff. I, I think I can spot is that the starter set for the latest D&D there behind your shoulder? Uh, that would be the starter set. I'm just going to do this. So you can see some of the books there. Um, I don't have them all at the office. That's just the, the uh, copies we have for our office games. So every other Wednesday night we play here at the office some D&D. Some, uh, &D, and then the alternating weeks I have another group come in. And we variate uh, our weekly game. At present it's Blue Rose. But uh, we just came off a, a year and a half long traveler campaign. Blimey. I, uh, okay, I'm going to let myself get completely distracted from my notes right in here because I love D&D. &D. Do, you, do you DM or do you, uh, do you, do you play? I do uh, a lot of DMing and a fair bit of playing. Uh, fortunately, my wife is very understanding. Uh, we actually live stream on Mondays on, on uh, Fumbles and Fame, uh, play a lot of Roll20, and then I have a... One uh, in real life game, the, the Wednesday night game, we're playing Tomb of Annihilation right now. And uh, yeah, so, uh, but I'm GMing that and one other, two others at the moment. <laughs> of course, you work with Second Dynasty. So how did Second Dynasty get started? Uh, what sort of services do you guys provide? Well, uh, actually, I, I started in animation. My my background is in animation. Uh, my my uh, degree was in uh, specializing in Maya. Uh, so I've actually worked for about uh, seven years professionally uh, since since I uh, finished my degree. Uh, and this is my second uh, company that I started in in that industry. Uh, this time uh, without partners, so I, it was completely my own thing. And uh, so I got started out working with uh, this uh, wonderful animation company we here, ha have here in uh, Trollhättan, in Sweden, where, where I happen to live. Um, you might notice my accent is not Swedish, it's Australian. Um, but my wife is Swedish, so uh, we have settled here. Um, but yes, Docus Animation Studios, um, have, have, I've partnered with them for a number of years. And what they do is a combination of traditional animation, uh, like cell uh, animation, but also stop motion, uh, where they're building the physical models. And for me, that was kind of a new thing, um, being in the 3D side of things. Um, but we decided to uh, buy a printer together, a 3D printer, to see how we could cross-pollinate our, our two disciplines and see if we could work on things. Um, so we kind of, it started out as animation, but to be perfectly honest, right now I'm just making spaceships, and I love them. <laughs> of course. Well, that brings us very neatly on to the new campaign, Starship 3. Yeah. Uh, now, as of as filming this, it isn't up. It isn't up, but I believe this will go out when... It will be up when this video is live. Yeah, Wednesday uh, the 16th of January is the launch at, at uh, 1600 UTC, uh, or 1700 local time. Yeah. Um, so very, very excited for that to see how it goes. Um, we kind of went big, uh, uh, this time, um, being, uh, six months worth of, uh, preparation. Um, so this is the, the third Kickstarter now and the, the previous two, uh, I was, I was strongly influenced by, um, especially printable scenery, uh, the, the, uh, Kiwi, 
uh, company that, that has been doing fantastic stuff with the 3D printable uh, fantasy terrain. Yeah. Uh, but having played Traveller, I'm like, well, where's where's the sci-fi? <laughs> and and I also wanted it to be uh, my own taste uh, in sci-fi, which is very strongly inspired by um, like the late 70s, uh, 80s uh, style, both um, you know, like your, your traditional Hollywood films, like very strongly in, inspired by by Alien, for example, mm. uh, Star Wars, of course, um, but all of these sort of model. Um, where they use the physical models, uh, you know, I, I think it's just there's nothing quite like the real thing, which is kind of ironic coming from 3D, because they're obviously we we're doing the same sort of techniques as you use in CGI today, um, but uh, the 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 other inspiration, uh, which is a strong inspiration, I think you can see quite a bit of it on my wall, is uh, 80s and, and late 70s. Uh, anime sci-fi um which has strongly inspired uh my own designs um but i've been making spaceships uh, like drawing them since i was about 10 so it, it's just a natural thing i think yeah yeah it's interesting to see that progression uh, and uh it's interesting to see hear you say that you started drawing these spaceships when you were 10 and now you've come all this way to bringing your 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 skill set with three D printing to, I, I was going to say making them a reality, but that doesn't sound quite right when they're <laughs> tabletop miniatures. Well, reality and reality, they are physical. Uh, once you print them out, um, and well, it it kind of started. Like I said, I've been I've just it's been this natural progression for me. Um, my very first video game was uh, an old uh, SSI uh, game. Buck Rogers in the 25th century, which uh, is like, it used the AD&D uh, rule set, although I had no idea about this. I was like 10 at the time. Uh, but but there were these retro rocket ships uh, in, in space. And, and since then, I've sort of been doing the, uh, you know, design your own spaceship sort of thing. And, and it, even when I got into 3D, because I was actually modding uh, the original Homeworld uh, to have a Macross mod, way back in the end of the 90s. And, and that's when I first picked up uh, 3D Studio and later moved on to Maya, which I work with today. So I, unlike many of the other uh, people that are in the uh, industry, they're actually doing sculpting in, in like a ZBrush. I'm actually hand modeling everything. Um, so, so it's not uh, using sculpting tools per se. You can get much uh, cleaner mm. uh, the designs. Okay, well, I actually have a preview of the Kickstarter page here, if we just bring that up and take a quick look. Mm -hmm. I showed this briefly before. There are the three starships you're going to be funding all over this campaign. Yeah. But very, very characterful. As you said, they definitely show off the, the 80, that sort of 70s and 80s style of sci-fi ship. So what yeah. what are your plans with this Kickstarter? What are you hoping to do? Oh, uh, this I guess this is a proof of concept. Like the last two I did, I I the first one I wanted to prove to I, I did it just as a hobby, and it's like, well, okay. I, often in animation, uh, at least in Sweden, where uh, we don't have continual work, you sort of have these down periods. So you could be working on on a feature length film for you know a year and a half, and then you've got six months of dead time. And it just happened to be one of these uh, periods. Uh, actually, it was during full production, now that I think about it. But I, I had it on the back burner for a while, like, let's test this out and see if there's an interest. And the first Kickstarter sort of proved that there was an interest because I got a, a lot more funding through than what I was expecting. Um, I, I wasn't even really expecting to recuperate the amount of time I put into things. Um, and then the second one was sort of like, well, could I potentially do this for a living um, so this third one, I, I've sort of decided to to go all out, um, invested ov obviously a little bit more uh, time and money than than um, what people might otherwise do, uh, but just to see how big the interest is and how viable it is um, to continue making spaceships. So it, it is a gamble. I have no idea how uh, maybe. <laughs> 
now on Saturday, uh, people can look and say, okay, well, this went well. Or uh, they could say, like, oh, no, no interest here. Um, but no matter what, I, I, I've, it, it's a passion project anyway. So, um, I, I mean, you can see one of the ships here in the background. I bought it up from the cellar where we have our, our enormous set. It's like three by two meters. Um, uh, Mickey from Doc, who's molded all, all of the um, the actual set, which we, we dress it up with, you know, it's all proper lighting. It's not 3D renders. Um, the models are, are quite physical. Um, let's see. <sighs> see if I can bring one in front of the camera here. Go Got your scout ship here. Oh, wow. Uh, sorry, not scout ship. This is a shuttle. Yeah. Um, that is a hefty miniature right there. It is. It's actually a, a little bit heavier than what you'd otherwise have because... Because the actual uh, plastic is um, fairly solid, uh, obviously, um, or, or at least for those familiar with 3D printers, uh, you, you can sort of set the thickness of the walls and whatnot. Um, it, 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 I'm not saying it's not a challenge to print, uh, but I've printed these on, on um, consumer um, printers as well. Uh, so most people, even with like an Ender 3, which is probably the best starter 3D printer at the minute, at the minute so uh, could could print out the parts for i think all of the ships um so yeah and yeah that's that's really impressive and it, it i was just reading over part of the kickstarter there. it says uh that they all come complete with open lock compatible modular interiors now that's really exciting getting to explore the interior of the ship can you tell me a bit more about that please yeah, like OpenLock, uh, obviously from printable scenery, uh, it's sort of like an open source clip system. Uh, there are a variety of others which are easily compatible with just a, a uh, I think with a, a, a converter clip, you can get like a Dragon Byte, you can get um, a, a ton of different um, clip systems anyway. Um, I, I should probably demonstrate. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how easy it will be to do, yeah, with, or how well you hear me from back here. But because the the you saw how heavy it looked with with the scout ship and uh, with the shuttle. Sorry, this yeah. is the scout ship. We're having a bit of a blue Peter moment. Here's some we prepared earlier. Yeah, wow, that... she is very heavy. Blimey, that thing was so big it didn't even fit entirely on the screen. No, well, it, it's, uh, I believe, 73 centimeters in length. So I'm just going to take some turrets off. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can sort of see that the... Oh, yeah. The cockpit lifts off. It is a little bit detailed on the inside, but there you can see I've got the lighting system in there from, from uh, the still. Um, nothing's integrated at present. Yeah. <laughs> These are just prototypes, but uh, I'm very happy with the way they've turned out. Yeah. And so then you can just lift off the the top. Oh yes. This and then I shall try to. This without breaking it. <laughs> Got some free. Yeah, I have to. in there that would be a bit of an issue. I have to admit this whole lifting off the top and getting to dive inside. I'm very nervous. Oh wow. So here you have uh, the deck plan. But of course, this is fully modular, so you can actually lift out parts. Um, so, for example, this here is the uh, yeah is the living quarters. So these are made up of like open lock clipped pieces. Yeah. So they snap together, and you can take them apart. And they have these clips in them. So essentially you can um, plan out whatever kind of layout you would like and customize it. So potentially you could use it for your player ship or um, reconfigure it so that you're actually got like an alternate deck plan in case you want to use the same sort of design as an enemy ship or if you want to remix it. Um, so yeah, it's quite large. I might move that back because I really don't want to damage it. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting flashbacks to two different things. First off was the old, I think they were Matchbox uh, toys I used to play with as a kid where you could lift up the the top and find everything within. I, I, I'll admit I'm flashing back to those sort of toys hard. 
But the other thing was a video game called FTL Faster Than Light. Oh, yes. Yeah, bit of a redundant title, but there you are. And it, <laughs> it was all moving around and the sort of bird's eye diagram of the ship layout in that way. I would yep. love to sort of play that sort of thing out on the tabletop. Yes, well, I mean, I kind of had to compromise at least. It, it, we'll see what happens in future campaigns depending on how this goes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, the scout ship is quite large and heavy, so I, I would imagine uh, it, it uh, would be a little bit... I don't know how well it would scale. Uh, so it's kind of like a compromise, I guess, if if it was built out in reality, I think it's something like... 46 meters long or um hang on a second i can check it out uh 48.8 meters or 162.6 feet for you yanks out there <laughs> blimey okay now uh, you, yeah yeah no go on well there were there are three ships currently listed uh, as we saw the transport ship the space shuttle and the scout ship oh uh, do you have plans for any more past that? Uh, any other vehicles you hope to bring in through, kick, through stretch goals? Um, not unique vehicles, per se. Um, b b just because the sheer amount of work I've put into these. Uh, the, the scout ship and the shuttle actually uh, came out of the last Kickstarter. The shuttle, um, in its very, I guess, uh, initial form, was much more simplified. There was much less uh, hull detail. And uh, the scout ship um, was the final stretch goal. Um, but I, I would never have spent the three months I spent on the scout ship or, or the uh, six weeks I spent on the shuttle um, because it sort of like hit me that, well, maybe this could be the next campaign. So uh, my, my former back has got a um, hell of a lot more bang for their buck in the last campaign, um, which I kind of then sat in the... the situation of oh well how how do i bring them back i have one third ship which they haven't had the uh, the transport which is perhaps a little bit more galaxy far far away than the other designs <laughs> just a bit um, intentionally um yeah. i mean all of my designs come from a place of nostalgia um they, they're still uh very very much my uh, aesthetic and uh like like design aesthetic um, but they're, they're designed to remind people of the things that make them happy, as far as sci-fi is concerned. Um, so that was the challenge, but the way I'm addressing that is no, not a fourth ship. Uh, and, and, well, never say never, but <laughs> it, it, that would be a very big commitment uh, time-wise. Uh, however... Uh, the idea is the ships themselves, they're modular. I can't actually uh, show it completely uh, because yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're building this set out. We've, we have glued some uh, of the base pieces together just uh, for practicality's sake because we have to move them all the time um, and, and don't, don't want to stuff things up. <laughs> uh, however, the, the parts of the ship are assembled with open locks as well. Um, so... The stretch goals are actually that there will be ship variants. So, for example, the scout ship behind me, uh, I have designed a gunship version which has additional turrets and replaces the sensor suite at the front. Uh, there, there is a cargo version where the cargo hold is longer, uh, a second story, for example. Uh, the different variants of the shuttle so there's a version that's armed i've got a version where it has wings instead of uh, the, the sort of old school uh huge big thrusters some people aren't really into that i've e even got a uh, a sort of a star trek runabout sort of uh, alternative with uh, some some warp uh, nacelles uh, in the works so the idea is the further we get in the campaign uh, the more ship variants you get so essentially um Instead of three ships, you're getting, I think I've designed, up, up, up to about 15 in total, uh, you could say. Fantastic. Yeah, it's certainly getting a lot for you. Uh, certainly getting a lot in the Kickstarter there. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, all of these are designed for home printing for pr or printing services. Uh, yeah. Do you think that making files available like that is, is going to be the future for miniatures gaming? 
I think um, it's in the future of miniatures gaming for sure because uh, miniatures are getting more expensive. Um, it's just you know great. Uh, like I myself have pledged for a ton of Kickstarters. I think you can see a few of them on the shelves over there with Nemesis and and uh, you know like uh, Zombicide and whatnot, which have these great miniatures that I use in D and D, for example. Um, or, or the uh, the wonderful uh, Bones Kickstarters from Reaper. Um, but there's not a ton of terrain, and the terrain obviously costs a lot more plastic-wise. Uh, so in the long run, it is actually right now far cheaper to get your own printer and print out the actual terrain. Um, and the whole concept of, you know, lock-based terrain, I think, uh, increases the usability not quite to the same point as of Lego, but it's the same sort of concept. So the main issue with printing it out is the reusability. And, and when you can sort of tackle that, um, it has a home in a uh, tabletop for sure, no doubt. Um, yeah. And, and uh, both are, are growing markets. I mean, the, the um, uh, on, only speaking of the tabletop uh, role-playing side of things, which I'm more familiar with, uh, that's going through a new renaissance at the moment, uh, as I, I'm sure we're all aware of. Uh, growing 25% each year in the last couple of years. And the same is true of 3D printing. So although I don't believe in the uh, adage that, you know, in the future every house will have its own 3D printer because <laughs> they are a little bit um, fussy, to say the least, um, it, it kind of becomes a part of the hobby. And, um, you know, uh, definitely uh, in the future there, I think more people will have uh, the home printers and, like I said, the end of three retails for like $200, I think, US dollars, and um, you can get sort of all the way up to stupid amounts of money. But um, yeah, F FDM, uh, it, it works for terrain. Um, it can even work for miniatures, but um, terrain especially, I think, it's, is its strongest suit. Okay. Now, before we start wrapping things up, I do have one very important question. Yes. And that is, if you could make any classic spaceship for or, or, or sci-fi vehicle what one would it be um okay that is a tough one uh so many to choose from but if i have to go back to the thing that probably influenced me most when i was most impressionable i'd have to go back to uh the 1984 anime film uh, macross do you remember love which is uh more uh, known probably in the West for Macross being the first part of Robotech. Uh, however, they did uh, in Japan make a feature length version of it and the, the quality of animation in that is just phenomenal. So either uh, in a reasonable scale, it would have to be a, a VF1S uh, uh, Super Valkyrie Um, or uh, if scale was not an issue, I'd actually do uh, the Armored One Carrier, which is a, well, that's a 450 meter ship, so oh, <laughs> maybe a bit too ambitious. No. Uh, but I just absolutely love uh, those designs, um, and it's uh, strongly influenced me. Yeah, I, I've got to say, my own personal one would go back even further. I'd have to go to the Thunderbirds. Ah, uh -huh. I'd have well, to go for the probably Thunderbirds. Probably enough, I have. Um, not not quite the same thing, but uh, throwing around the ideas of what what would be in a Kickstarter for uh, one of them would definitely be a vertical ship, um, oh. so more like a traditional rocket. Um, think uh, well, may maybe more more fifties uh, style, but uh, think of the uh, Rosinante from um, from um, the uh, oh the Expanse. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, before I let you go, would you like to give away something for the viewers? Yeah, go on. Go on. We e can do that. Excellent. How about covering a pledge level? Yeah, we can do that. Perfect. Okay, guys, if you want to be in with a chance of having your pledge covered for this Kickstarter, comment below, let us know what you think. Which classic sci-fi spaceship would you most like to see on the tabletop? And be sure to put in your backer number for the Kickstarter. In the meantime, Ben, thank you very yep. much for coming on the show. Oh, thanks, Sam. Okay, we're going to carry on here, and we'll see right. you soon.
Mm, interesting stuff there. They have me kind of excited with this modular interior if you want to have a look at yeah. it. So you see the way the ships are here. You've got your outer shell, but whenever you're printing it, the entire top comes off. Yeah. And you can actually take out, so you see the engines, all the different rooms and stuff. All of this can be traded about to give you different layouts. So if you're doing this for role-playing games, your DM can actually have this sitting as a big centerpiece on the table. Yeah. They've redone the interior of the ship. So your players, when they go in, they don't know what they're going to find. So you're kind of excited about that? A little bit, yeah. There's stretch goals as well on mm. the cards for it. And he's hoping to get five variations of every ship. Yep. So there's a lot of room for expansion there. Mm -hmm. the that, other thing I, these are huge. The other thing I was going to say that's very cool for this is we were talking about core space earlier in the show. Yeah. These would be amazing for using alongside core space in particular, I think. So, yeah. yeah, you Core space should. is a good example. Yeah. Mm. Well, Especially because you, do... you, I mean, I was going to say you could just have the ships, you know, parked up and then use them for different scenarios later as well. Because one of the big things about core space is that whole sort of interior fighting thing on star, uh, on st uh, space stations and the like, and, and down on planets. But you could just do all of your interior fighting on a spaceship, which would be very cool. So yeah, but if you had these laid out alongside the battle systems terrain as just like a hidden part that you could start going in and explore, like a that would be very cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. would be very very cool. Yeah. So. I ah, really like it. It's up and running at the minute. Already. Um, what's it got? About another 29, 20, 27, 27, days. 27 days, days to go. Is it funded already? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. It's I, it a very is, low yeah. funding goal because it is just the STL files. There's no mm -hmm. physical components. Uh, and he blew through the funding for that in short order. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Well, it's cool. Oh, like good. For those who have a 3D printer, the most time consuming part, well, other than printing it, printing does take quite a long yeah. time on 3D printers, yeah. but the, the time consuming bit is sitting down trying to make files. Mm. Like I used to be into 3D modeling quite a lot, but when you take a break from it mm. and then you sit down again, or at least I find for myself, I'm sitting down and going, I've been out of this too long to actually sit down and model anything because the 3D programs are actually quite complicated. Yeah. Mm. And if you stop using it and to go off do other things, like mm. your mental mind map of what needs to be done, when and how it's done, breaks down. And 3D programs do have a tendency of updating a lot yeah. mm -hmm. over the course of a, a few years. Well, it's, it's the same so, with any computer program you're using. As a new version comes out, the, the tools change, the bells and whistles that are in the program change, yeah. where, even where they are or what a favorite tool or a macro you used to use isn't there anymore, it becomes obsolete. The, it's mm -hmm. interesting because that, then this is the bit that you need. The STL file comes in, you just print it out. Mm -hmm. So that's the hard, that's probably the hardest bit. Like you're trying to generate 3D models. Yeah. Is the probably the hardest bit of three D printing? Well, the other the thing, longest bit is maybe actually then trying to get three D prints out because they're out, not yeah. particularly quick mm. at the minute. Although mm. there are faster, there are fast, there's just a few different types. You know, mm. You've got your plastic ones that just sort of build up like this. Yeah. Head well, you've got your stuff. extrusion ones and yeah. you've got the resin bath ones. The one thing that the the guy running this Kickstarter needs to be very very sure of is that he can actually get his files to work in the different three D printers. He's He's actually I know some put of the formats are a little bit funky sometimes. He's actually put together a little bit of a thing towards, I think it's towards the bottom of the Kickstarter where he talks about the kind of things you'll need in the programs and stuff that he's used for his uh, building of his uh, starships and kind of what you, you, might, you, might, you, might, you, what you might need to consider when it comes to it. So there's some tips there too, which is very cool. So. Yeah, so there's actually a printing requirements yeah. sort of paragraph in here. Yeah. But even if you don't have a, a 3D printer, I would say people could go and get onto this because you've got the Fab Labs and stuff still up and running oh, yeah, yeah. where you can actually take your files in. Someone who knows how to run the machine, you can just say, look, I want to learn it. Maybe. I want to use these files. Would you mind running it out for me? Like the sheer size of some of these models. You'd ah, be but going it's all in, modular. You'd, yeah, but you'd be going in every day of the week. Like be one because it's still hours to print yeah. things. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. So I, I still think this is like a you own a three D printer and you do it at home sort of thing. True, but if you look at it, he has actually broke it down into components. Yeah. So this would be about four, three, four segments long for this particular ship. Yeah. So you're printing segment one, segment two, segment three, segment four, segment five, segment six. Yeah, I totally and then you get start that. Doing all your other I bits. just think you would be going back and forth and back oh, yeah. and forth mm. so much that it would just be a if, too if much some of them chore. are mm. yeah, if some of them are nineteen hour prints, mm. yeah, things like that. You know, you're... I mean, that's the thing that stops me using the three D printer here we have in the studio. Mm. Uh, is that it has to be run, and sometimes you need to babysit it. Yeah, not only does it run for a long time, but it runs hot. Yeah, so therefore you're caught out with the double edged sword of going. This needs to be on for a long, long time, mm. but I can't leave it alone, uh, just in case. In case. Just in case mm. it burns the building down. Yeah. yeah. 
I was uh, just going to say as well, just to make a note as well, as well in the interview as well, they're talking about giving away uh, one of your pledge uh, pledge level to someone who was lucky enough to comment on the show. So if you want to get involved with that and potentially win your pledge, you put it forward for this Kickstarter. There is an option for that as part of this uh, this show as well. So watch out for that. So yeah. I assume the winner has to be pledged on the Kickstarter yes. yeah. one, when the draw is made, yeah? Yeah, so you have to pledge for the Kickstarter, and if you're very lucky and you manage to comment below, make sure you you know say what which backer number you are and all that kind of thing, then hopefully you'll win, be able to win your pledge and uh, get cool. it for free, which is very cool. So yeah, sweet, right? Exciting Kickstarter that mm -hmm. one.